It's 6 p.m. and today is Monday, May 23rd, 2022. This is a special meeting of the Marquette Township Board. If you will, um, do we want to do the pledge? Yeah, we can do the pledge. Okay. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Roll call, Randy. Trustee LaRue. Here. Trustee Winslow. Present. Trustee Everson. Here. Trustee Marks. Present. Treasurer Johnson. Here. Clerk Retari is here. And Supervisor Duran. Here. Staff present is Manager Kangas and Superintendent of Public Works, Lenny Bodinas. Okay, did we happen to get any emails on this? We did not. Just the meeting? Okay. Oh, we need approval of the agenda then. So we'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. So this is a public hearing on the CWRF application that our Public Works Superintendent put in for wastewater improvements. Um, it's an actual public hearing. Okay, so I have to open the public hearing yep. at 6.01 p.m. 6.03 actually. Oh, this says one. All right, if you want three, we'll do three. Okay. All right. Is there anyone wishing to address the board? Is there anyone wishing to address the board or make public comment? Is there anyone wishing to address the board? With no one responding, we will... 604. 604. We'll close the public hearing. So, the next item on the agenda is policy discussion. Consider resolution adopting wastewater system improvements for the Clean Water Revolving Loan Fund. Hey, Lynn. Yes, sir, ma'am. We do have to read just this one, this two-page document. We have to? We have to read it. Just, okay. I, just so it's like eight minutes. Um, it's just part Which of the requirement of the submittal process. Which page? Um, it's just uh, this two-page agenda. Item, and I can read it into the record. Okay. That was probably something that we received via email that's not in your it's packet. Separate. Correct. Okay. Yeah, it was sure, if you want to read it in the, the microphone then. So I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. We did. We, we actually did. Had, we had a motion and a second. For the agenda. And we oh, settled okay. in favor. Yep, yeah. that's okay. Oh. So Matt's going to read it in. So uh, greetings. Uh, Matt Trito, UP Engineers and Architects. This meeting is being held as part of the project plan requirements for the State of Michigan Clean Water Revolving Fund CWRF submittal process. This program is set up for funding sanitary sewer system improvement projects in the state of Michigan. This is the primary funding source for Market Township. UP Engineers and Architects was retained by Market Township to assist with the funding application process. This meeting will outline the purpose and impacts of the project and then open the floor up for public comment. The following to be discussed at the public hearing. A, a description of the sewer system needs and problems to be addressed by the proposed project and the principal alternatives that were considered. The proposed project includes the removal and replacement of existing aged pumps, electrical and SCADA equipment in the Bancroft, Huron, and Wright Street lift stations. It also includes new generators for the Bancroft and Huron lift stations, stations which are beyond the operational life expectancy. B, a description of the recommended alternative, including its capital cost and a cost breakdown by project components, e.g. collection, treatment, and storage. The total proposed project costs are estimated at $1,292,000. The options for the project are either option one, moving forward with the outline improvements, or option two, no action. The preliminary cost opinion is outlined below. Sewage pumps, $120,000. Electronics, four hundred fifty thousand. SCADA, one hundred fifty thousand. Generator, two hundred thousand. For a construction subtotal of nine hundred twenty thousand. Uh, total project cost, one million two hundred and ninety-two thousand. Item C: A discussion of project financing and cost to users, including the proposed method of project financing and estimated monthly debt retirement. Proposed annual quarterly or monthly charge to the typical residential customer and any special fees that will be assessed. 
The proposed project is to be financed through the CWRF section of the State of Michigan Revolving Fund, SRF. The project is estimated to cost $1,292,000 on a 30-year 2.125% loan with monthly payment costs of around $5,000 per month, which spread out among the 1,678 equivalent dwelling units, EDUs, results in an approximate cost for single family residential user of $3 per month. This cost does not include the potential grant or principal forgiveness that may be pr provided by the state of Michigan. It also does not factor in the current contingency built in the market township sewer system of around 200,000 a year. The current budget can absorb the full project cost without a rate increase. D, a description of the anticipated social and environmental impacts associated with the recommended alternative and the measures that will be taken to mitigate adverse impacts. No anticipated adverse social or environmental impacts for this project. Construction shall take place during normal hours. The improvements are specific to list station locations. Sewer service shall be maintained by the contractor throughout the construction process. Um, John and I were talking, I know John's going to touch base on this as well, but this is also in preparation of the allocation of Senate Bill 565, which is the remaining ARP funds that the state machine was allocating towards infrastructure, and I know John has a little bit more information to that regard. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. If I may, I can explain the reason why we rushed to do this, and I think we've talked about it on multiple occasions here because we notified you that uh, Lenny did file notices of intent to apply on the clean water and drinking water sides of the revolving loan fund. This is only the clean water side, so the wastewater portion of the project. Um, the reason we rushed to do it is not only because we have projects we know we need to do, it's because we wanted to get in as, as early as possible with this one-time influx of infrastructure money. So Senate Bill 565 passed, it was about a month ago, a total package of $4.7 billion for infrastructure, of which $1.9 billion goes through EGLE, that will be handed out through the state revolving fund programs. We got in on the first round possible. They're actually shortening the deadline for the second round. Instead of being next spring, it will be this November. We landed on the list way at the bottom for two reasons. The first being we are not a disadvantaged community, which is not a bad thing, but it does hurt us from a points perspective the way these grants are scored. So if you're not disadvantaged, you're disadvantaged in getting funded, if that makes sense. What that means is we're more likely to have to fund it ourselves than those that can't fund it themselves. The other issue is on the drinking water side, we don't believe we had lead service lines, so we lose points there too. We're not here to talk about the drinking water side, but That'll come up at the next public hearing we have. Anyway, out of that $1.9 billion in funds being distributed through the state revolving fund, $600 million will be through the drinking water side in the form of grants, $400 million on the clean water side in the form of grants. If we're fortunate, we'll get some chunk of that. If not, the worst case scenario would be that $3 per month increase per customer if we choose to raise the rates to offset it so that our current funding mechanisms remain, remain in place, meaning any new debt is funded by new revenue. We, we haven't gotten to the point where we feel we need to do that yet. I think we need to wait and see how this process goes to determine whether or not, first of all, we get funded through the SRF program, but also um, if we don't get funded, uh, what our other options are. Okay. Lenny, what do you want to share? Anything? That was quite a synopsis. Um, John covered it uh, pretty well. Uh, th the biggest uh, thing with this particular project that we're looking at is uh, greater efficiency. Um, with potential new development coming in, uh, we want to make sure that we're up to speed and up to date with our equipment. Make sure that we can handle everything and we want to be able to be, be efficient with our electric use and our uh, the way the pumps are running. So, um, and then even with the generators, these generators are very, you know, they're 
pretty ancient. So we want to make sure that we have reliability built into our system as well. So that's uh, we want to make sure we're reliable and efficient with our with our wastewater system. You you may recall it wasn't that long ago we were here in front of you requesting almost emergency funding for the replacement of one pump and rebuilding of another pump, all from the same era of these other three lift stations that we know we need to rebuild. So this was last year. That means these next three are coming shortly behind it. This is trying to be proactive. Whether or not we can get a project done before the next pump fails, I guess we do a little finger crossing, right? So that's really where we're at. Okay. Questions? Matt can answer some too, not just the board. Are any? The reading two that says the adoption of the uh, project plan required. <clears throat> There's a final project plan must be submitted by May 1st. Now, we're past May 1st in that. What does that mean? Uh, it's supposed to be June 1st. June 1st. Okay. That's why we rushed to have this meeting too, but I didn't know that it said May. I did catch it. Yeah, so yeah, so the resolution should have that correction. Yeah, June 1st is the deadline. Okay. And we've gotten the advertisement in. I saw that, so we're covered there. Yeah, we, we saw, submit, submitted our preliminary plan to the state already, and they've done a review and provided some feedback, so we'll be implementing some of their changes in here. And the important thing is that it's administratively complete, and the process moves forward. They'll do a formal review uh, after the June 1st, so they'll only provide some more comments and feedback, but most important thing, it's kind of like a pass-fail grade at this point. We want to make sure that all the boxes are checked, and we're in line to get our money, and um, there'll be maybe some back and forth with the state, but that's to be expected. Okay. Okay. Uh, talking about you talking about three dollars per user fee. If we're unable to get this dollars, then we'll have to go with ourselves in that. And that'll be approximately three dollars per user. So that is representative of a thirty-year two point one to five percent loan. If it's self-funded, most likely something like that will come out of our cash reserves. Um, so exactly what a Apples to apples fee would be. Uh, it just depends on what, how much of an annual surplus the board wants to try to run to try to replenish the cash reserves used to pay for the project. So, what are the chances we could get like five hundred thousand or a number? You know, based on our points. Usually, it's kind of like an all or nothing funding. Okay. They go down the list until they run out of money. Okay. Um, the biggest question is exactly how they're going to administer principal forgiveness or grant funds. Um, given that Senate Bill 565, which is now Public Act 53, is incorporated, it's going to be the most financially advantageous time to submit a funding application through the uh, Drinking Water and Clean Water Evolving Fund, which is why John and Lenny have set us up to, to do both of those applications with the hopes that we actually get some money to do some of this stuff because principal forgiveness and grant money to the state is typically a pretty rare circumstance or it's usually uh, almost a... Uh, negligible amount, you know, 10%, maybe 15%, um, with the amount of grant money that's floating around, we're hoping it could be as much as 25% or more, which which is significant when you're talking about infrastructure improvements of this magnitude. Right. Oh, one last thing on the, the letter from uh, you, Matthew, you talk about uh, UPA will evaluate all options once the funding is offered. Now, the, the cost associated, is that built into that one Point two nine million. Yeah. So what I mean by that is, is that we're we're just approving a resolution to submit a project plan. The state will make a formal offer letter for funding. The township will then be able to consider that offer if that's the most advantageous way forward, or if it's self-funded, or if there's other funding mechanisms that may be available. We're just stating that at that time we'll come back with a formal recommendation letter on saying, this is our offer. This is the full impact of the rates. We believe that this either is or is not the most prudent path forward, and then provide a formal recommendation on how to proceed. No, no, I understand you that that dollar cost for evaluating it is part of that one million. Well, we have a three thousand uh, dollar contract with Market Township for both the clean water and drinking water, and our evaluation of the funding is included in that cost. Okay. Okay. Dan? Is there, have we had problems with the generators or is this just they've reached their 
maximum life expectancy? Um, We've had some mechanical problems with them, and it's, I mean, now we're kind of playing, I mean, they're 30 years old, so we've had minor problems that we've been able to fix, but, you know, like, even with another car, we're going to eventually get to a point where we can't fix them anymore. And we don't want to be in that situation when we need that pump to run, and so we're trying to kind of get ahead of the game here and try to get these replaced. And is there any money is as far as the trade-in value on them, or where do they do they go to the, the generator boneyard? More likely, they'll go to the generator boneyard. So, a lot of that depends on how the specs are written for the project when we get to that point. We could say to be salvaged um, to the by the contractor or to the township. Personally, I'm not thinking we want to be in the business of peddling used generators because if you have it and you have an unrealistic expectation it's just more junk laying around that you can't get rid of. I would prefer that we write the spec where the contractor is responsible for it and they can do whatever they want. That may affect somebody's bid price in our favor, we don't know if they see some value in it or it might be scrapped. They drain the fluids out of it and bring it to the junkyard. But these things have reached 150% of their normal useful design life. So we're already on borrowed time and we're doing well to be 30 years in on the same generators. That'll make more sense to get rid of them. Somebody else will them. And so, um, and so we um, did not plan to replace those generators after 30 years and put money aside to do that. Um, I can't answer that question directly because I haven't been here long enough and I don't know that Lenny could either. Um, I would assume we that's been part of the money that's been going into the reserve on an annual basis. In fact, okay. we had budgeted for one. We just got a $25,000 supplemental grant to pay for it. That's at Center Street. But we never had one there. That's a brand new one where we've never had one. These are 30-year-old generators that are now due to be replaced. Could we fund these replacements on our own? The generators? Absolutely. Yeah. Do we want to pass up an opportunity at some federal money when it comes along once in a lifetime? Definitely not. We'll see what happens. The state will make us an offer if they get to us on the list. If we don't like the offer, we weigh our options. So how many people are on the list? So the preliminary list has been released for drinking water. There's 133 applicants, I believe, on that list. Um, I forget exactly where Marquette Township falls within that overall priority. Clean water, which is the sanitary side, which is the public hearing that we're here for tonight, they do not release a preliminary ranking for that until after the project plans are submitted. Um, not really sure why the state of Michigan has two slightly different processes for essentially the exact same funding mechanisms, but apparently that's how the legislations were written. So we'll get a project priority ranking after the public, these project plans are submitted believe in about a month or so after who, after the deadline. June or July? Yeah. Who is who is we will get? Uh, the township and UP engineers and architects as your representative for the state. Okay, so it's not public knowledge? Uh, it is. It, it they'll is. release it on their website. Okay. But it's definitely not a location or information that the public will seek out. But say that will be information that will be shared and disseminated most likely through these kind of meetings and through the township. You never know about website. the public. Well, <laughs> be careful. I'm, you never know who's going to like what. I'm speaking, I guess, from a normal municipal experience. But typically, uh, that information would be shared through townships. Okay. So um, it is public knowledge. Yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Then I got a question for John. Or, sure. Uh, the, what's the um, life of a generator? Either, either one of well, your design life, and, and this is probably more appropriate to direct to Matt, but I believe the design life of anything mechanical, pumping equipment, you don't want to really assume more than 20 years. In fact, I believe that's what the depreciation schedule will tell you. Yeah, that's that's what we typically budget for is a twenty year, twenty year life expectancy. Now, 
you know, with good maintenance and good you know exercising schedules and stuff, you know you can see twenty to thirty, and then it starts to start chasing your tail a little bit at that point in time, which is you're on borrowed time. time. Yeah. At that point, the maintenance cost will exceed the replacement costs, or you'll start to see it progress to that. You're not, <clears throat> lots of things enter that you know. Um, What's normal, what's not, you know, I'm just like pipe in the ground, you know, it's good for 50 years to 75 years, but, you know, there's some of the field before that, so you never know. Well, depreciation schedules will say 50 years, but you might be able to get 100. Yeah, some do, some don't, you know. There's a lot of factors involved. It's your soil types, <coughs> um, your groundwater, your bedrock, uh, what kind of traffic you have over the top of it, how deep it was buried. Um, as Plenty of factors, environmental, weather, you name it. Well, look at the grinder pumps. Go over there years ago, a couple years back, went over there and looked around, and they have parts here, grinder pump laying over here, you know, they're trying to fix them, and sometimes you're better off just to, <clears throat> the best ones to replace, just wear a backup, and then get new ones to replace them. Well, that's actually the road we started heading down about right. two years ago. Exactly. Yeah. Work. And you're going to be way ahead with doing stuff like that, you know. I think we have a perfect example of that specific case sitting here in the room. We replaced a pump with a remanufactured, rebuilt pump, and then we were back there within a month replacing it again. Yeah. That means that pump has probably exceeded its useful life, and you put a new one in. Right. Quit messing around with it. I think Dan has seen that firsthand a couple of times, right? A couple of times. Yeah, I have. <laughs> and when they're going to fail, they're going to fail at night. And you're going to have to have three, two, three people go, or if not more, and inconvenience to the person. Yeah. Or the weekend. Or yeah, on holiday. Weekend. Exactly. Yep. And especially these generators are very critical. I mean, that's if the power goes out, that's how we're pumping the sewage out of the township. And uh, so, I mean, that's a real critical piece of equipment. Um, that basically, I mean, I believe there are four engines in there, so it would be like driving, yeah. bedding everything on a 1993 <coughs> F-150 that's all rusted out. Are you going to drive that to California? Well, you probably could make it, but you probably don't want to take a chance. So. <laughs> but by being proactive, I think that's the sounds like the best move. So that's and the way we have to think. We have not even talked about the SCADA. I, I believe that's one of the most critical items with the modern cyber threats we're dealing with. Um, you hear almost daily now the risk of cyber threats coming from the war-torn parts of our world. Intentional cyber threats because nobody wants us meddling in their business. Well, who do they pick on? The most vulnerable. If we don't upgrade our systems, we're, we're going to be wide open to that vulnerability and we don't need that. Not on our ratepayers dime. I'll make the motion to approve a resolution adopting the CWRF final project plan for the wastewater system improvements and design and authorized project representatives. Support. Okay, motion and support. Anything else? All in favor? Yep. Uh, resolution. I was just going to as soon as I said that. Thank you. So roll call vote is Treasurer Johnson. Yes. Trustee Marks. Present. Yes. Trustee LaRue. Yes. Trustee Winslow. Yes. Trustee Everson. Yes. Clerk Retari is yes. And Supervisor Duran. Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Okay. You're our public too. Do you want to say anything else? <laughs> I think you're, you're okay. set. Yeah, you're set. Now that the resolution passed and the public hearing is closed. Um, yeah, I, you know, I think we're just putting the township in the best possible position to have all different avenues available for them. And, you know, testament to Lenny and John to make sure that that was put into place. Um, they approached me after they submitted their notice of intent, so they had their ducks in a row and, and they were ahead of the curve. So, keeping things moving. And, um, yeah, we'll see what type of opportunities are presented to us by by this new Senate Bill 565 and how the money goes. And worst case scenario, we're right where we started and it only cost the township $3,000. And either way, that, that time, money, and resources spent to develop the funding application can be used for other entities if those opportunities present themselves. So 
thanks for yeah your continued confidence and we'll keep moving the ball forward okay thank you thank you thank you matt we know you've got plenty of other work you can be dealing with and some of them have more zeros at the end than ours but this one is the most important to us obviously so we appreciate your efforts and time well, happy to keep it close to home. I get to drive five minutes uh, to my house, and that's not always the case after the municipal meeting. That's true. Okay, any announcements? Okay. Um, we have a couple motions to recap. Yeah, two motions tonight. The uh, agenda was approved, and the resolution uh, adopting the wastewater improvement system improvements for clean water revolving loan fund is approved. Okay. Any board member comments? Linda, um, can you tell me what SCADA stands for? I'm not a huge acronym fan because it means hoping, something totally different in my world. I was hoping somebody would have asked that. Supervisory <laughs> control and data acquisition and John had pointed out the, the importance of having this, these different programs and stuff in place. The idea is, is that this is purely a monitoring software so that these guys can see what's going on with all the different infrastructure in your system, both from a water and sewer standpoint. So you cannot actually make changes to how your system is operating from this SCADA system. You can monitor it, you can see that there's an issue, and then you go on site and manually make changes. That's where communities can get themselves in trouble if they have so much connectivity that they can start making changes to their system and their software through their phones. That's when someone can jump in and hijack your system. It should always be set up that you're doing your, your monitoring through your SCADA and that you're manually making changes on site. And that's how you protect yourself from something. You have an interface that's not connected that's to the internet. It's purely a manual interface, exactly. Yeah. You can no. go there and make your changes by person, in, with your hands, in person not through your cell phone because that's when you start getting yourself susceptible to your infrastructure being attacked. So does the program set up such that it um, provides daily reports, hourly, or report upon real problem? time? Real time <laughs> typically is that these guys are able to like, I want to look at the Bancroft lift station. Boom. Here it is. It shows what the current conditions are, if it's running or not, or your well pumps. or It's, it's a really, really helpful tool and then it would be the most important element is that any alarms would be immediately tied into your cell phone so that as soon as something's out of whack, you're getting notified immediately and then you can start taking action, whatever that may be. Power outages and you need to switch, transfer switch for your generators or overheat on your pumps. High you're levels, low levels, all that. Yeah, high levels, yeah. All, the, all the good stuff that these guys need to react to. And, and we do keep, it, it also does log uh, daily, weekly, and monthly information so we can go back and look at trends and if we see something we can follow all that kind of stuff so it is very helpful yeah pump run times for example yeah. you know that you got maybe an I and I infiltration and inflow issue upstream of a lift station so it's all just very valuable information and it's an important step in having a, a well run system we can we can view it remotely yes so Lenny is it your cell phone that beeps it's whoever's on call, but I think I'm number two on the list. So. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah. you know, that's important to know. He yeah. also like has the fire an, department stuff. He also has the same information available on his desktop. Yep. Yeah. So he can see it bigger. He can look at it closer. The old way of doing this was having the alarm go to a dialer, and that dialer calls a phone. Mm -hmm. And it says, alarm at such and such lift station. And then you go over there and guess you start trying to figure out what the alarm was for because it doesn't tell you specifically. This will tell you, and, and it's not that we don't have good SCADA in place, it's just old and vulnerable. So, I should also say it was set up probably a little bit more like a Cadillac and we need a um, Impala. Yeah. So they it was a little bit of overkill in that there's too much information. We're getting more alarms than we need because we're responding before we actually need to. Um, sometimes you get an alarm and it'll, it'll correct itself. Um, and you can usually tell just by looking at the software on your phone and it'll say everything's running normal. Well, if you're getting these alarms prematurely saying something's wrong, you're activating somebody likely on overtime. Mm -hmm to respond that didn't need to move if, if it would just 
timed out, recycled, five minutes later it's fine. So we think if it's properly set up, it'll actually reduce a little bit of response time as well. So does it give you some kind of a notice that it has reset? Or do you have to sit um, there and watch it? Some of the alarms, actually a lot of alarms, like if the communication goes out, it'll say that the communication went out and then it will call you back and say that it came back. Um, so yeah, there's some alarms that will reset and tell you that we're okay now. Um, but like some of the ones, even with the list or the high levels and stuff, that does not call back and tell you that it's reset. You have to actually go on there and look at it to make sure that it's okay. Which is, which is good, because we always want to physically or visually verify that it went down where it's supposed to be. Can you reset it from your location where you are? We can reset the alarm uh, to quit calling people out, because we do have a cascading alarm. So if one person doesn't answer, keep it, it just starts going down the list, which is good. Um, some of the ones, you would have to actually go to the station and reset it, which is also good, because you, sometimes you want to see, actually you want to see what's happening. There. Yes. Yeah. I'd also like to say we're in a position in 2022 where we have not one or two, but multiple um, UP contractors that deal with SCADA systems. Our system is handled by a contractor in Metro Detroit. Ask Lenny how many times he's seen one of their technicians here and how many times Lenny has... Yeah. Resolve the issues with their equipment while they were on the phone with him. With FaceTime, so I'm turning the thing around, showing them, you know, the components. So that's that does would be helpful if we had somebody more local versus Metro Detroit. We've included in our specifications that 100 mile radius. You have to have a tech. So that way we may need to go 125. Yeah, or <laughs> we'll eliminate one of the UP. Sure, sure. So it's just another layer, obviously, if you have issues, you want, want your service people to be available to you. Do we have none in market? So we have Jeff West Tull, Ishpeming, maybe? Yeah, West Ishpeming, which is Tallsma, I think, right? And yep. then um, there's FDS, and then there's Iron, Iron Mountain. Mountain. So Moles are like Tech one Mountains. and two. We typically use Tallsma. I've been working with Jeff for like 15 years. Yeah, but, as have I. Yeah. Um, the issue with him is he's a one-man show. And yeah, he he hays. Yeah. So during hay yeah. season, he's hard to get a hold of. Yeah, that's always my complaint is when he's out haying. It's a good career choice yeah. if you want to get into that. Oh yeah. You can make a lot of money. He's in two great fields, which is uh, supervisory control systems and hay, and uh, I'm sure he makes hay at both. Can you have a stipulation in there that it's um, within a certain amount of time? Uh, you can. That just becomes a, a little bit more difficult to police, right? Because then how how do you then retroactively come at somebody for being in violation of a contract that would technically be administratively complete once the con construction is done? Which is why we've gone to the you know the radius, um, just because that's immediately measurable at the time of the contract being administered. But um, be more than yeah happy to explore alternative methods that can be utilized for sure. I think we have a lot more options today than we did even five years ago. Sure. Yeah. At least two more UP firms that are now getting into municipal SCADA systems. That's good. So do we? St so we don't know if there was money put aside for any of this today, right? You don't know if there was money put aside in capital expenditures for any of these things. I think the only one we know for sure was Center Street. Yeah. Okay, so that's all we know. And, and Ernie, long you long guys long. don't remember or know mm -hmm. any of that. So, But we're, we're going to do a better job with that in the future, right, we said. Yeah, and they'll be done. <laughs> Maybe. Well, they'll still need a 20-year build-out again. I mean, I think the problem with all of this is we go, oh, they're good for 20 years, and then we go, we don't have any money Weird. kind of thing. And so we need to, we need to think about it. <coughs> 20 years down the road. But our asset management system that we're getting... It's going to do that for That's going to do we that. We have an asset management plan for the wastewater system. That plan actually said we should have started spending about $50,000 a year on this station two years ago. Yeah, well... Now, what do you do with $50,000 a year? You need to spend it in one chunk, do your upgrades, and be done. Otherwise, it's a pump here, it's a pump there. You have all kinds of mismatched equipment... 
and then you're going to be doing it on a weird cycle all over again because something fails prematurely. These systems you almost have to replace as a system or you're going to be nickel and diming yourself to death. And we can do that with a new asset plant. Well, it'll help. It'll help. It's kind now, of like the roads. Keep it's not in mind, different. our drinking water asset management plan grant was never funded. We had a good plan with Matt that would have finished the equation we have. We have a good asset management plan for our wastewater system that needs to be manipulated based on the scenario I just explained. We need to take that $50,000 annually for the lift stations and spend it in one chunk. So the money we've been saving and not spending, if we don't get funded, that's all we're going to have to pay for. Mm -hmm. It's the only option we have. And if it means we're going to draw down our fund balance too, too much to make us collectively comfortable, then we have to raise the rates. Those, that's really what our options are. So we might have to raise the rates even if we do get funded because we can't afford to pay the debt without drawing down the reserves to an uncomfortable level. So uh, we will have a much better financial ana analysis of this when we know what the offer is, if there is one. And we've still, we're a lot more proactive than almost all the communities around us. You know, we've done a better job. Some of previous management just kind of waited until stuff got close to failing before being proactive. You know, and we saw those same five or six items in the CIP, and then the money would go somewhere else, and then the, they'd keep staying on there, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of a twofold issue. I mean, that's, we do want to be proactive on our system and keep it up, I mean, because we don't want any catastrophic failures. I mean, right now we can we can manage what we have. We can manage if something goes wrong, we can get it fixed. And, but if something, we want to prevent the catastrophic type of stuff, the whole lift station going down or both the pumps burning out at the same time, which almost happened to us a couple of years ago. So that's kind of what we're looking at is just to kind of keep up on this stuff and keep going with it. And there's not very many communities that have the luxury to say, well, if we miss on this funding, well, we have the opportunity of self-funding. That's a testament to you guys putting money away on an annual basis for these type of improvements. That is, that's not a normal operating procedure. A lot of communities do what Lynn described and say, okay, well, we're just really not going to do anything, and now we got to do something, and we hope we get a funding opportunity, and you guys are if we way do, more proactive. If we don't get funded, we're in the same bad position we were when we applied for the funding. Correct. Whereas here, we have options, we just don't know how great they are yet. And there's there's just too many questions that we still have to answer. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. John? I'd like to thank UP engineers and architects and our own Marquette Township staff for a job well done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we understand what you're saying, too. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Unlike other explanations. And with that, I'll make a motion we adjourn. Okay. <laughs> and we all know what I'm part. talking about. Yeah, support. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Aye. Thank you. We are adjourned at 638. I already wrote Is down. down? Yes. So, <laughs> Thank you. Sure that I'm on Thanks, Matt. Yeah. yeah. I could sit around talking about infrastructure all night. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's hard to do. want this back? I can print one. I'm still working on that sanitary thing. Yeah, so are they, they're obviously.